Hi and welcome to the In Place User Guide for staff and academic members. So when you log into InPlace, you will see this as your home page. Yours won't be as busy as mine, um, but when you log into InPlace, you should be able to see a section called self-placement submissions. And within that, the names that come up should be relevant to your um, school and division. So if you want to scroll and look for the student record that you're wanting to approve for a placement, you then click on it and it will bring up the self-placement application here. So you've got the student's name that's already populated with the allocation group that they sit in. All that means is um, the school that they sit in as well as the division, and this will automatically all come up. You then have an area called agency. This just means the placement provider, so where the student is doing their placement, and then uh, the options of their dates and the duration of their placement. So as you scroll down, where it begins to say placement details, this is the information that the student will have populated themselves when they logged into InPlace to create the self-placement record. So you've got a placement start date and end date here, um, and also the placement duration. So there's the option for the student to put in the duration of their placement and measure this as either hours or days. They also have the option to select placement times. So this could be, for example, if within their placement in alternate weeks, they work Monday, Wednesday, Friday, one week, and then Tuesday and Thursday in the other week, there's the option for that, them to put that in there. If whilst you're scrolling through um, the details that the student has put in and realize that maybe either their start date or their end date is wrong, what you can do is provide some feedback to the student here. So you would just need to change the status from pending to incomplete and write some feedback such as, um, end date is incorrect, please amend ASAP. And you would save and send that. And what that does is send an automatic notification to the student's in-place dashboard to say that, um, you know, you've received some feedback from whoever it is and it reads, please change the end date. So as we continue to scroll down, you then have the agency details here. So as I mentioned, agency just means placement provider. So you've got the agency name, their email address, their phone number, if they do have one, and a website that you can visit. Also the agency address here. So um, country, street number and name will be important for the information that we need, town and the postcode. So again, you're hoping that the student has inputted all of that information there. We then have the agency contact details and the supervisor contact details. So the reason there's two sections for this is that some companies might have a HR um, contact as the agency contact. So the person who deals with any kind of contracts and working out uh, start and end dates and things like that. And whereas the supervisor contact will be the person who is specifically responsible for the student whilst they're out on placement. However, quite a lot of firms um, do have both the agency contact and the supervisor contact as the same person. And if that is the case, you can click this little button here. So as we scroll down, the student has inputted the information that we need. There's an area for additional comments. So should the student have any comments they want to add, they can type those there. You've got the self-placement date, which is just the date that the student created this self-placement application. As we scroll down, the additional information is still what the student will have filled out. So there's the option to ask for if there is a salary. So if the position is paid, a yes or no answer and some comments. So for example, if it was yes and they wanted to comment on how much per hour or per annum they earn. You've got the DBS. So whether the placement requires a DBS and if so, do you have a valid one? So again, it's a yes, no or not applicable. And if it was a yes and they did require to have some evidence, there's the option to attach in a file right here. There is also the question of right to work. So do you have a right to work in the country your placement is in? Again, the student can write yes or no. And if they do need to provide any evidence, they can do so here. We then have three questions that are asked to the students regarding their mental, physical well-being and mental and health and safety. Um, so if they have any concerns over their mental or physical well-being or concerns about health and safety in the workplace. 
Um, usually we see that students do reply no to all three, but if you see that a student has responded with a yes to one of the questions, we advise that you get in contact with the student, you know, via email if possible, um, and just ask, you know, if they're happy to have a separate conversation with you or if they wanted to follow up about that. There is a question of adjustments, so if they require any workplace adjustments, they can click um, on this button, on the checkpoint button. A question of the working contract type, so whether the student is working full time or not, and we have added a note here to clarify what would be full time work, which is 30 to 40 hours, and 29 hours or less is classified as part time. An option on placement delivery. So obviously in the current climate um, with COVID-19 and the pandemic, a lot of uh, placements and internships have been delivered remotely slash virtually. So we do have options of whether the placement is face to face, virtual or a blended delivery. Placement type. So what type of placement slash work experience is the student completing? So the current options are a six to 12 month placement, a short term work experience or placement. Um, a summer internship or a work shadowing opportunity. So we are hoping that that kind of covers all basis. But if you um, do have any feedback from students that they're unsure of which to pick, just let us know. There's then the option for a job description. Um, so the student can either copy and paste the information in the text box here, or they can attach a job description here as well. There's then the placement expectations confirmation. Um, so this is just asking the student to check the box to confirm whether they've read the student placement guidelines document, which can be found at this link. This is simply just an overview to the students of their responsibilities whilst out on placement, um, who they should contact should any details on their placement change, as well as some um, wellbeing information and who they can contact with the who they can contact at the university should they need any support. And finally, we have the confirmation. So do you consent for your placement provider to share information with LSBU? A simple yes or no question. So until there, the confirmation, this is all the information that the student has inputted themselves. So like I said, um, your main role will simply be to kind of review this information and ensure that it is correct. If you find that anything is incorrect or that there are any concerns from the application, I would suggest either contacting the student directly or putting in some feedback here. So as a staff member, your um, only area where you will need to answer some actual questions is here. So it's called the placement risk profile and it's to be completed by staff. So you've got the first section, which is site visit. So is a site visit required um, and is a pre-placement site visit required? So again, a yes, no or a not applicable. If it is yes, please select a um, site visit date here and it brings up a calendar that you can add in. We also ask anyone who does answer yes to this to add a reminder in their own personal outlook calendar. This site visit is usually mainly used for um, schools such as uh, health and social care or built environment and architecture. So it might be on the majority, you, the answer would simply be no. We then have the placement provider responsibilities checklist. Um, so what this is, um, as part of the university approval process, we do have the option to send out a four page document to employers, which simply um, asks if they have policies in place for things such as employer, employer liability and public liability insurance, health and safety, if any risk assessments need to take place, things like that. Um, so some schools do decide to send that out prior um, to students creating a self-placement record. Um, and this can also be attached to the student's profile later on in the process. But we would hope that if you do send that out, then obviously you would get that back from the employer and respond a yes. And the final question is, have you addressed the student's concerns? Um, and this is regarding the wellbeing slash health and safety questions from earlier. So in, in certain cases, the students will reply no to all three. So you simply can just type not applicable. However, if you did have a conversation with the student, um, we would suggest just writing something like um, has a separate conversation with the student, just so it's down and classified on the system. So once you've inputted that information, what you will need to do is before you move on to the next step is click the save button. I'm not going to do that now because this is a live record, but that is what you would do. Then you will need to click on the self-placement wizard, which is the next step in the process. This will take you to a step called match agency. So as we discussed before, the agency is the placement provider. 
This step is um, inputted into the system because we might have employers that have been used before within InPlace. And if so, we can simply just merge um, the contact number, the contact details and the address with previous agencies that have been used before that are the same. But in this case, we do have a new agency. So what we would need to do is add them. We've already got the name populated there, but we would need to select the agency type. So in this case, it would most likely come under domestic violence because this student is going to a programme called Alternatives to Violence Project Britain. The agency level would usually be facility. And then all the other information is populated already, so we can just save that. We then need to match an agency contact via the personnel. So again, um, if the agency has been used before, it might still be the same agency coordinator as our contact. But in this case, we do have a new person as it is a new agency. So we will need to add to personnel. So we've got the details already inputted here, an email address. For personnel type, it will simply just be agency coordinator. And you can click um, later on, which says, uh, agency personnel as the coordinator and the supervisor because as we understood before it was the same person. So once that has been saved the um, agency contact will come up as the first person here so as we can see the agency alternatives to violence project Britain and then we've got a personnel name here. So all you will need to do is select them as the supervisor and the correspondent and we scroll and click next. This is then a final overview as part of the self-placement wizard of the information that the student provided. So things such as their salary, their right to work, um, any adjustments that were needed. So essentially an overview of the information you've already looked through. You can click next. And then this will take you to the final page of review and approve. So there's some steps here. We've got the notify agency contact and notify placement supervisor. So like we said before, this is usually the same person, so you won't need to click on both. As I mentioned previously, we have the four page and placement agreement form that gets sent out to employers to ask about risk assessment and public liability insurance and things like that. You can either, um, as a school and division, decide to send that prior to the student creating the self-placement record, so once they first secure the placement, or you can do it at the end of this um, review and approve process. And what you would need to do is click on notify agency contact. And this brings up an email template um, that already populates the agency supervisor name here and populates the name of the student with the agency of where they're going for a placement. This attaches the placement agreement form. So as it says here, we require certain information from you as the employer so that the placement can be validated. Please find attached to placement provider form with the information we need you to complete and return via email. So that automatically gets attached to this and gets sent to the student, um, to the placement provider, sorry. Um, so you can preview the message if need be, preview the document and then send it. But again, I'm not going to do that in this instant because it's a live record. But if that's already done, been done prior, you've already received this document and now reviewing the um, record and approving it, you can simply click approve and confirm placement. This will open a pop up. That says and um, that brings an email template that goes directly to the student's email to tell them that their self placement submission has been approved. Again, I'm not going to send that right now. And once all of that is done, it will be saved and you can exit. With the record, um, like I mentioned earlier, you've got the placement agreement form. There is a way to get that attached to the student profile. So what you would need to do is go to placement and then self placement. And you would click um, to, to find the student on these three little buttons here and type in the student code in this box at the top. You will then click filter and it will bring the student to the top of the process. 
You can then click on the um, student section. I'm just going to open this in a new tab. And here, this just gives an overview of the student, but where it says notes and documents, you can then attach the internship agreement form, which as you can see, has already been attached here. But all you would need to do is click add document, title it, you know, internship agreement or placement agreement form, and um, you don't need to put a description and then just select a file that's already been saved in your own desktop. This means then that you've got everything in one place um, within in place and you don't have to keep anything on your own personal computer.